Good afternoon. Merry Christmas. Can we try that a little louder? I mean, I know it's we're in church and it feels like morning. And try this again. Merry Christmas. It's good to be with you. I'm Pastor Paul Luter. I'm the interim pastor here. I've been here since November 1st, and yes, I really am that short. I'm very glad to be with you, and I'm very glad that we get to celebrate together today uh, the birth of Jesus Christ with us. With that, please rise as we begin our worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who was in the beginning, who makes a dwelling among us, who covers us with justice and mercy. Amen. God of all goodness and loving kindness, we confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbors. We have turned away from your invitation to new life. We have turned away from the lowly and downtrodden. In your abundant mercy, forgive us our sins, those we know and those known only to you, for the sake of the one who came to live among us. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Hear the good news of peace and salvation. God forgives us all our sins, not through our own work, but through Jesus Christ, made known to all people. With all who come to the manger, rejoice in this amazing gift of grace. Amen. Please be seated. 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence, and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We'll now hear God's holy word. The first reading is from Isaiah 9. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from Titus chapter 2. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and world passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord.
From the second chapter of Luke's Gospel, please rise through the reading of the Holy Gospel. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people, To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, for the gift of your love, we give you thanks. We give you thanks because it's not the kind of love that we've experienced before. It's sort of strange, in fact, that it would come with no expectation, that it would come with no deserving it, that it would come no matter who we are or where we've been or what has happened to us. It is quite amazing. So thank you for that. And thank you that you are with us this day too. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. And let me say how strange it is to see people in the pews, more people in the pews than I've seen since I've been here. It's good to have you here. You know, we live in a bit of a strange time, do we not? How many of you had to register for church for this afternoon? How many of you have ever registered for church before in your life? Basically, nobody. I mean, who registers for church? It's a strange thing. But we live in a strange time, and we live in a strange world where things just don't make much sense, do they? How many of you you have had to change your Christmas plans about a dozen times between uh, fall till now? How many of you... 
are grateful that you can't get together with family because you still don't have their Christmas shopping done. How many of you are grateful because you won't be served lutefisk this year? Ugh. For years, the people of Israel heard that a Messiah was coming. They heard that a Messiah was going to come, and when that Messiah came, the Messiah was going to straighten out the mess that was going on politically, socially, otherwise, such that the poor would be raised up, such that those who are shunned would be heard, Oh, they knew the story, and they were looking for it. They were looking for the signs. They were looking for who it is who could be the one. They were on guard, on watch all the time. They were looking for signs. And it made me wonder, for you and I, what signs we're looking for tonight as we gather. Apart from the construction signs, right, that uh, describe the f that show the fact that we're in Minnesota, do you know when I was driving out here today, I saw a sign that said end of, end of road work, and I wondered where did the beginning of the road work start? There were a lot of cars in the ditches, so I assume that that's why they were in the ditch, because of the road work. Maybe we're looking, I, I li I've lived in Minnesota, I mean, I was born in Minnesota, raised in Minnesota, and the first sign of heat in Minnesota, I give the great thanks and praise. I am not what you, I was not made for what you would call high heat, but I also was not made for what you call low heat, <laughs> or no heat. But maybe there are other signs that you and I are looking for today. Maybe. Maybe we're looking for signs because, well, we're feeling rather sad and we're really looking for something, anything, to smile about these days. Maybe we're tired of teaching our children at home. I have a five-and-a-half-year-old and I love her. Really, I do. I'd swear to it in court. But distance learning has been a growing edge, <laughs> I think, more for the adults than for the children, maybe. Maybe we're just upset and we don't know why, and we're looking for a sign to figure things out. Maybe our relationships are torn apart, with our friends who we've been with for years and years. Maybe we graduated from high school with them and now all of a sudden we disagree on one thing and we don't have anything to say to each other anymore and we're looking for a way back, back to that friendship. Maybe the relationship with the person that we have a significant relationship with is not going well. Maybe we're looking for a sign. Do we stay? Do we not? How do we heal this? How do we move on? We don't know. That can be difficult. Maybe our jobs are on the line right now and we're not sure because the economy seems uncertain whether or not we're going to continue to have a job. Maybe the world does not make sense and we're looking for the plumb line to see where center is in the midst of all of it. Maybe we're grieving because of the death of a loved one. I think certainly of, of Larry Hausman's family, whose funeral will be held here on Sunday afternoon. Pretty hard to find joy in the midst of that kind of grief, certainly so close to Christmas. I don't know, maybe you are looking for a sign that I haven't even named, but you know what I'm talking about, or maybe you know somebody for whom that's true. So 
The people of Israel kind of gave in to everybody who said that they were the Messiah. And when the Messiah turned out not to be, so too were there, was their trust and their loyalty and their money. People were left afraid and scared. So even the people of Israel who had longed for this long-coming Messiah, who looked for signs that the Messiah was in their midst, maybe they were looking for the wrong thing. Because the Messiah was supposed to be an adult, you know, because adults have it all figured out. (laughs) Um, Adults have it all figured out and everything goes just right for adults. Except when it doesn't. So nobody knew what to do when the angels show up and they said, this will be a sign for you. This will be a sign for you. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child lying in a manger wrapped in bands of cloth. This one, this child will be your Messiah. And all God's people said, what? This made no sense to them. It was made no sense to us, maybe. Maybe it makes no sense to us. Maybe because what we've heard about relig- from religion in years past has been, has been judgment and hatred. But that's not why the baby Jesus came. I've never said that sentence before in my life. That's, why the baby Jesus, that's not why the baby Jesus came but I think I'm going to use it now. I might even put it on my, on my business cards. That's not why the baby Jesus came. For hatred and for judgment. So maybe this doesn't make any sense to us. So maybe this is especially why Christmas is such an important time. Because when this baby comes into the world and is handed into the world, given to the world, the world has no choice but to open their arms and open their minds and open their hearts to the fact that maybe the way things have always been is not the way it should always be. My grandpa, Gerhardt, was the grumpiest human being on the face of the planet. I mean, Jesus just shook his head when he saw him come, and he did not know what to do. Jesus really, I think, prayed for him a lot. But seriously, my grandpa, uh, I never saw him laugh. I never saw him smile. I never saw him enjoy himself, never, ever, ever, because he's German, never, ever, ever enjoy himself, because apparently that would be too much, until one day, my grandma came up to him and said, Gerhard, blah, 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 and my grandpa grumbled, because that's how he spoke, he grumbled, and my grandma said, honestly, (laughs) and she walked away, and she came back, with one of my cousins who then was a little baby at the time and she handed him to my grandpa and she said, here, you take him. And my grandpa was like, I mean, really, you know, uh, the speech of the, of the uh, cartoon characters on the Peanuts cartoons, wah, 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 wah. I thought that's how all adults spoke because that's how my grandpa spoke. Wah, wah, wah. I didn't understand him. I couldn't, I couldn't get it. But here's what I noticed when this baby was handed over to my grandpa, that eventually, over time, when this baby smiled at him, because the baby didn't know my grandpa was the grumpiest human being on the face of the planet, she didn't know, he didn't know how mean he was. This baby smiled at him and wouldn't you, I wouldn't believe it if I didn't see it myself. My grandpa smiled. I had to sit down. I didn't know what to do. And then, if that weren't enough, my grandpa started to baby talk. This 80-some-year-old man was baby talking. And I'm like, 
Who are you and what did you do with my grandpa? This handing over of a baby to my grandpa changed him or it reconnected him to who he, who he was a long time ago before his grumpiness, when he, before his parents split, at, before they went on the boat to come over from Germany. A baby changes things. And if this baby is not just the thing, it is not just the gift, it is only a sign of the gift, a sign of God's love and grace and mercy, how it is that God relates and, and engages with us and cares about us and loves us and forgives us no matter what. If this is only a sign, then dear friends, this is not just good news, this is not just great news, this is the only news that matters. The only news around which everything else is pointed. God's love and grace and mercy are not, are not given to the highest bidder. They are given to us and for us, freely and fully, again and again and again and again. Still, we don't quite know what to do with it. My five-and-a-half-year-old little girl, Annika, and I were having a conversation last year. She was four and a half then. And I said, Anna, this was right before Christmas, I said, Annika, Jesus loves us. And she said, no. I said, no, Annika, Jesus loves us. She said, no. I said, Annika, Jesus loves us. She says, Daddy, he does not love us. Jesus loves ballerinas. I don't know. But I do know this that as much love as he has for ballerinas, apparently, he has even more for us, even more for you, even more, so that the darkness of our lives might be lightened by love, so that the heaviness of our lives might be lightened by mercy, so that the fear in our lives might be lightened by hope. Brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus is not just the sign of these things. He is these things. Given and shed, broken, crucified, raised from the dead for you and for me. Love upon love, grace upon grace, mercy upon mercy, healing upon healing. This is what Jesus brings. And he doesn't ask you if you want it. He just gives it because... Jesus loves us. Yes, us. Yes, you. Amen. Please rise and together let us say the Christmas Creed. I believe in God the Father, creator of all things, who sent his Son as my Savior. I believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, announced by angels, worshipped by the wise men, and who lived, suffer, die, and rise again to free humanity from sin, death, and the power of the devil. I believe in the Holy Spirit, who has brought me to faith in the Christ, and by whose continuous work in my heart I am ever led to lay before 
the feet of Christ my worship, my life, my love, to live under him as my king, both now and forevermore. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, you know all things. You know all of us. You know the world. You know what we carry. You know what is too heavy. You know what is sad or fearful. You know the grief that wells up within us. And the joy, O oh God, you know where there is joy in the world. So enter into those places and spaces in our midst. Enter in and bring, O oh God, your grace and love and mercy, your healing and new life. God, help us to hear from you what we need to hear this day. Hear us, O oh God. So many people are sick right now, God, those whom we know and those whom we don't, and so we ask your presence and mercy to be with them and with their families, separated from one another because of rules, uh, COVID rules right now. Bring your peace upon those whose loved ones lie in the hospital bed, upon those who are in hospice, upon those who have died. Grant your comfort and strength to their families. Let your love bind them to you and never let them go. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. The news of your love, O oh God, is so overwhelming to even, even begin to realize. And yet, you stake your life on it for us. Work that love in us and through us, in our relationships and in our work. Let us be signs by the power of your Holy Spirit of your love and grace in the world. Lord, hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. For those who are alone, this night. We ask your presence. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. All of these things, whatever else we should pray, we ask trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite you to open your communion packet. But before we do communion, let me say thank you, to, uh, thank you for being here and thank you for the ways that you are sharing in mission and ministry with us as you share yourselves, your time, and your possessions and the gifts of money that allow us to continue to reach out with love to the world, with God's love to the world. We are grateful for you. Let us pray. Gracious God, you came to us as one unknown, bringing joy and salvation to the earth. Nourish us as your, at your banquet table, that with all who welcome your birth, we may proclaim your peace, revealed in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Glory to God in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. Giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup. Giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and drink, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness 
of all of your sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In, with, under, and through bread and wine, Christ comes to bring life and love and light and new life to you. Take and eat. Take and drink. Now may the body and blood of our crucified and risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which you have just received, strengthen you and keep you in his grace, now until life everlasting. Peace be with you. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us from your very self with the body and blood of Christ. Through this mystery, send us forth to proclaim your promise to a world in need. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. To us a child is born, to us a son is given. All right, they're going to do the distribution of light now, and I want to say this. If you have a candle that is not lit, you should have it like this. No. How do you do that again? doesn't matter. Just follow them.
technology is great except for when you can go ahead and blow out your candles. Please rise for the benediction. Almighty God, who sent the Holy Spirit to Mary, proclaimed joy through the angels, sent the shepherds with good news, and led the Magi by a star, bless you this day through the word made flesh. Amen. Go in peace. Share the gift of Jesus.